but to make value on case. What's going on? Uh, why can't I tell my lawyer? Uh, why, what can I tell my lawyer? Um, I'm not 100% sure the nature of the question, but if it is a civil case and if the uh, policy cannot be obtained by which uh, they're seeking to uh, underwrite, then that would inhibit the case. Guest 18, if you want to ask a bit more information, I'd be, love, be honoured to uh, try and answer that in more detail. Uh, I do have a question here that someone's put in, a little bit clearer. The question is, I'm wondering if One Heaven has created ecclesiastical law marriage system yet because I'd like to perform a, a marriage within One Heaven. Uh, we call that matrimony, and in fact there is a reference to it. And uh, this is, I think, a topic that is probably quite relevant given the same-sex marriage uh, issues that are going on. If you want to look at the uh, description of it, click into Ecclesiastical Law on One Heaven and go down to Article 172, which is uh, matrimony, and I see it's not yet updated. I'm sorry, it's not updated yet. Uh, it needs to be updated. I will have that corrected for you at the back end um, within the next two days. So it's not there yet, but it will be Article 172, Matrimony. Uh, and you'll actually see the uh, Sacrament of Matrimony defined clearly. Um, okay, so I hope that you can go and have a look at that, Article 172. It's not there yet under Ecclesiastical Law. Uh, let's see if we've got anyone who wants to talk. I have one. Here we go. One, we'll just uh, unmute. Alpha, 999, can you hear us? Yes, I can, Frank. How are you doing? Good. That was a good presentation tonight, I must say. Well, it's tonight here, anyway. Um, I, my question that I, uh, I have a couple questions. One of them is about the will. Are, are we going to have some sort of format on how to prepare a will and how to file it onto the public record in your site somewhere? Yes. Absolutely, do yes. Have, do we have it yet? No. Is, is it on there yet? No, not yet. Okay, good, okay. And now, and then the second question sort of leans onto that one is, in preparation for court and our declaring to be executor, uh, would that document need to be in the form of an affidavit? And would the would that have to, would that include a copy of our will? Uh, not necessary. What what I would um, what I'd suggest in the simplest way is is this: uh, the, de the the will and testament will be a, a format that um, optimizes um, the requirements in their system to conform, but also to achieve the objectives that we want to achieve in nominated executor, in the claims of right, in the beneficiaries, and of course the rules of administration. Then once that's filed and recorded as, as a deed, then there would be a deed poll that refers to the appointment of the executor in the will that effectively is a secondary document that itself is then recorded. So the deed is recorded um, in reference to the first deed. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. Okay. And then the affidavit would then refer to the deed. Now, I know this sounds like a bit of a... A chain, but the reason for that is uh, is is that um, all that is required for the court is public record proof that you are occupying the office of executor. That's all that's required. Once you've got that, then any instruments that you are preparing, providing it conforms in the form of a uh, of, of a public form. Um, should be sufficient to administratively um, deal with any matter that is uh, due to go to court. Okay? So when we put the, uh, the rules of administration, what we're doing basically, we're not, that's, not, not, that's not us as being executor, that's the rules to whoever's acting as trustee. 
we're Correct. Voting. And the rules I'm, I'm hoping that people accept is that we have 33, I mean, put it this way, there has, and I defy anyone to find this, there has never in the history of civilization been a group that has formed policy of criminal law, civil law, judicial law, as well as canon law that has not itself been in power of society. Never, ever happened. Right. So our rules of administration are the canons and policies of Eucadia. Right. Well, it's certainly uh, each, each and every week it's getting more clear uh, how these things are sort of fitting together and it makes a lot more sense. And uh, I really like the idea of the, uh, the will for sure that makes the most sense of all. Anyways, that was my question. So, oh, look, thank you very much. And and I, look, I'm I'm as keen as anyone to see that we've got real, practical, straightforward, sensible material there for you. But what I'm not going to do is it's got to be right, and uh, the writing of it's got to be right, and the background of it's got to be right, uh, because I, I I do not want anything to be half finished and. I know it's, there's an urgency, but it literally is only a few more days and the quality of the material and the clarity uh, will be sufficient that I don't expect anyone will need to send me an email to ask, what does it mean? Okay? Right. So also, too, a little bit on the, this one thing. So clearly in our will, we identify the, any wards of our estate being children. Uh, we're cl basically claiming that in our will. Yes, thing. absolutely. And again, there isn't necessarily a standard, well, there is a standard will, but then there are elements that need to be identified. And one of those, of course, is the uh, is uh, filial relationships uh, for that very reason. We will talk in coming weeks in much, much more specific detail, but I don't want to do that until I can refer people to a site that they can look at as we talk. Yeah? Okay. So well. thanks again for everything you're saying. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yeah. See you. Okay, thanks very much for that. Well, I see we've got a few people on, so I'm going to go through these. Uh, I'll go to the next uh, one here, uh, just in the queue. Uh, uh, Dean and Strong. Hi, can you hear us? Uh, yes, hello, Frank. Uh, Hi. My name's Dean. <clears throat> Uh, from USA, New York, and recently uh, came upon the Eucadia site, the oneheaven.org, and I've been reading through, you know, the canons of positive law and the other canons there, and I'm, wow, completely impressed. I was really, like, blown away. And at first, when I was reading through them, I'm thinking, you know, my God, this would have taken someone decades to have, you know, compiled, yep. written. And uh, is that somewhat true that it did take you that much time to compile the information you present on those sites? Um, well, I've been doing this for 25 years. Right. Not all of it has taken 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the canons have only taken a few years, believe it or not, but it's been um, a, an absolute flood. It, it really, it's taken me 25 years to read the thousands and thousands and thousands of texts that are behind the information. Texts of law, texts of history, primary texts, jurisprudence, discussions. I mean, I won't bore you with the list, but, but the end result is what you see. But it has been a constant, full-time um, effort to prepare what's there and it's not finished I mean the 22 books will be finished they have to be finished by October to meet the historic mark before the anniversary of Martin Luther's great thesis because we'll be doing a uh, an even more special act um, in honor of that almost 500 year event right yeah I can see the, uh, uh, the similarities between this movement and what uh, Martin Luther did some 500 years ago, as he said. Um, yeah. I guess my next question, if you would, 
is um, about the One Evil site. Yep. And um, over the past couple of years, there's been what's called the Truth Movement in the United States. Yep. And it has uh, become quite a movement. It's grown rather significantly over the past couple of years. Uh, even though it's been, uh, from my perspective, uh, a tentative to have been co-opted by mass media, there yep. still seems to be that movement growing. And as I understand it, as I'm reading through the site uh, oneevil.org, that um, mostly what's being presented in the truth movement is just the face of the New World Order, and it doesn't really speak to all the other evil organizations that exist. And it almost seems as if that movement, the truth movement, at least in the United States, is completely blind to other organizations like the Vatican, the papacy, the Jesuits, etc. And do you have a what would be your explanation as to that? If you, you know, perceive that, you know, I'm kind of reasonable in my assessment of what's going on here because Yeah. Look, look I think I think what um I think what people would find disturbing <clears throat> is that uh, you remember this system has been functioning for a thousand years and has overcome revolution, disasters, uncertainty, corruption, and still survived. So that's a that's a that's a pretty big uh, thing to do, and it's because it has a number of natural elements built into it. What it's done exceptionally well is it has if if there has been no enemy, no natural predator against it. It has then created one, the one that it needs to survive. So the truth movement, sadly, has been the nursery of the next batch of people that have helped the rebirthing of the system. For example, the French Revolution masked a huge amount of terrible evil and change through the truth movement. The Nazi party was born out of the truth movement. The Thule Society was a group dedicated to exposing the truth. So th there is a history there. There is a provenance there, sadly, where the truth movement is actually the nursery from which the very worst tyrants are born in different societies and, and different ages and different parts of the world. It does not mean that people that are gravitate to the truth movement are bad. I don't mean that, and I, didn't, I hope no one felt that I implied that. But what happens in the truth movement, what any, any kind of movement for truth, is that it uh, becomes um, polarized around um, media heads as much as people become fans of different sports clubs. And because there is a much more uh, adversarial discussion that goes on within the truth movement, um, it becomes quite uh, like tribalism. And so this is the, the, the extent that there is in, for example, America, where there is a huge number of people that if you ask them in a basic premise, do they want to see a better world? Yes. Do they think the government is corrupt? They would agree. Do they want to see an end? Absolutely. But when it comes to the practical implementation, it gets hijacked. And sadly, it gets hijacked often by, by agents that are working for the other side. What I'm trying to avoid, because, and I hope you don't mind, but there are a few people on the calls who want to get through the questions. So I appreciate everything you've said, but I'm going to, I'm going to have to get through the rest of the calls. But just as a quick summary, one of the things that I mentioned with the material tonight about the legwork and the hard work is when we have a model, then we should be trying our level best to unify and help people, even if they may have felt negative towards Eucadia or me or any aspect to it because they felt that it was not their, um, the, what the thing that they wanted. But until that's ready, um, we, I hope that we can find points of unity between these different groups 
and not get stuck on who came up with something